Hi friends! Today I will show how to make induction soldering iron. Before I have made different soldering irons, but this is a novelty. It took only one day to come up with the design, to implement and to experience. And everything was filmed on camera. But I must say that this option is a prototype, so some design solutions may not be ideal. Today I will show only the design of a soldering iron, which will not work without a generator. But we will talk about the generator and other electronics in the following videos. So wait for the video with a full design. Unfortunately, earlier I had never worked with the factory induction soldering irons and I didn't even hold them in my hands. So it wasn't possible to study the design. So my soldering iron was assembled according to my own design from scrap that was lying around at my working space. Here is a design drawing. All we need is a copper tip, an iron tube in which a part of the tip is pressed and an inductor over an iron tube. Everything is simple. The inductor warms the tube. It transmits heat to the tip. The induction system heats directly the iron. The temperature of the inductor is much less than of the iron tube and can be heated to red. Let's start with the heater. And this is not an inductor but an iron pipe. My version is taken from an industrial soldering iron. On this part, a nichrome heater was wound. There are a lot of options for execution. Similar parts can be found in old soldering irons from stations in ordinary cheap soldering irons. Or do it yourself, just take an iron tube with a base. The base of my sample is plastic, but the plastic is heat resistant. During tests it has proven itself the best. Next is the inductor. It is 1mm copper wire wound around iron tube. The wire must burn before winding, if it is in a lacquer insulation. Otherwise, at first time turned on, the varnish will gradually burn out and will be accompanied by toxic smoke. The number of turns of the inductor is from 6 to 12. The turns mustn't come into contact with each other, otherwise there will be a short circuit. In order to exclude the closure between the inductor and the iron tube, before winding the tube was isolated with this miracle of the Chinese industry, heat-resistant adhesive tape. It easily tolerates temperatures over 400 degrees Celsius and provides a reliable insulation. A reference to the purchase can be found in the description. After winding, it is desirable to insulate the space between turns with the same adhesive tape, so that when the inductor deforms, accidental contact of the turns is prevented. Now we need to pull out the ends of the winding of the inductor. I drill the hole in the base and through the heat resistance cambric, pull out the ends. On the inductor must be put a casing of screening material. In my device, it isn't yet installed, as it is a prototype and created for tests. In the case of using an iron screening sheet, it is possible to lose efficiency since the inductor will partly heat it. So I advise to use a brass or copper casing. I almost forgot to say that on top of the inductor, again put the same insulation tape. The handle is a case from a cheap LED flashlight. The case is aluminium. There is a switch at the rear and it lies very well in the hand like a pen. The plastic base has densely entered into the case of a flashlight. It is possible even not to fix. But the switch had to be removed out as it is planned to install a plug for connecting the inductor to the generator circuit. The tip is a thick copper wire that has been fit snugly into the tube. It is not fixed, does not fall off due to uneven processing of the wire. You can use a thinner wire and screw it with a screw, as in budget soldering irons. The end of the tip must be sharpened to a comfortable shape. I wanted something like a wave, but it did not turn out very well. The diameter of the tip is not critical. The advantages of an induction soldering iron are very high. Compared with the conventional soldering iron stations, this one gonna get warmer faster. If we make a monolithic tip, where the iron part, which heats up, will be compressed into a copper tip, we will get a direct heating without any losses. Such a modification will allow the soldering iron to heat up for a couple of seconds. Another advantage is an easily replaceable tip. All you need is a copper wire of suitable diameter. The next advantage is that the design is literally internal. There is no danger of breakage of the heating element, which is very common in conventional soldering irons with a nichrome heater. With a ceramic heater everything is much better, but the ceramics are not resistant to mechanical damage and can break. But in our case nothing will be even with strong impacts, as there is nothing more besides a copper inductor. I consider this one of the main advantages. Next is the universality. The inductor can be wound in any shape and its parameters aren't critical. It makes possible to build a soldering iron of any shape and size with minor modifications in the generator circuit. And finally, it is a pleasure to solder with induction soldering iron, but you need to add a thermocouple, 
and an automatic system for maintaining the temperature. I'm ready to listen to your options about this. I will remind you that soon I will show the construction of the generator which will feed the soldering iron. So subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to evaluate this video and to share it with friends. This will give me great support. Now I have to say goodbye. With you was Kasyan TV.